Live from uh, Brick Arts Media, my name is Melvin Isaac. And once again, we're doing a great show with uh, different artists, uh, different talented people. And this one again is, uh, which is a great artist, Mrs. Lee. And she's gonna explain everything that she does. And she's back, <laughs> especially for Black History Week. She did a marvelous, she was the host. And everybody love her, love her, and they want to see her come back. And here she goes. She's coming back. So without further ado, uh, here's Mrs. Lee. Hi, Melvin. Thanks for having me back. I love being on your show. So I just wanted to discuss kind of my journey of really discovering my heritage and how that has become expressed in my artwork, which is something I've always wanted. So. About two Novembers ago, I watched 13th and it really changed my life because it woke me. It opened my eyes to the struggle that the black community does go through um, from the beginning till now and how it impacts us in so many different ways. And I've endured microaggressions throughout my life, but I didn't really have a name for them. And so when I watched 13th, it really helped me reflect a lot of my life. Um, I'm very fortunate to have gone to um, a really great school and to have a great education, but it was in the OC, which was primarily white. So I was one of maybe 10 African-American students in a school of about 500. So with that came a lot of pressure um, based on who the community around me thought I should be because of my skin tone. So when I watched 13th, I was really thinking about my experiences growing up, and I realized that a part of me had been suppressed um, because I was either too black or I was too white. And so I kinda, I didn't fit in sometimes, but I always knew that I'm who God created me to be, and that was most important before race, before anything else. But when I watched 13th and I was reflecting, it was like floodgates for me and I just had such a hunger to get to know the black community and to get to know myself as a black female. So I was very excited because I usually struggle as an artist with coming up with images um, just from my mind to create and once I realized that you know I can be whoever I want like if I want to use slang and maybe it sounds funny to you because um, I've been accused of you know um, my grammar is very proper so People say I speak white or whatever, but I love to use slang too. And then some of my black friends thought that sounded weird, but this is who I am. And so I felt free after watching 13th. And so I speak how I want, I dress how I want. I'm more comfortable with my hair and I love it natural. And I'm just learning about my hair. And the more I learn about the different aspects of being a black female, the more in love I become um, and feel more empowered and connected to my roots and my heritage. So. Actually, the day after watching 13th, I just started drawing, um, and this is what I came up with. This is my series entitled Black Girl Magic, and there's a lot of things hidden in there. So when I thought of magic, I thought of, you know, how beautiful natural hair is and like a galaxy. And so here is me and my evolution, and here is my mate, um, Ben. He is my partner in life, and he's really encouraged me to find my roots and to appreciate who I am and has helped me explore um, what it means to be a strong black female. And so this is the first piece in my series. This is created with marker and with gel pen. second in the series is entitled Queen. And so if you look closely, there's a lot of different details going on. Um, we have Africa right here in this blue and purple silhouette with a star um, in the west of Africa because after doing 23andMe DNA testing, I found that my origins line was Africa. So that was very special for me to have some kind of semblance of knowing where I come from. I have Saturn here because it's my favorite planet. <laughs> Um, here I have the date that my boyfriend and I met um, because he's been a very important part of my life. So I just have different things um, going on in the painting or in the picture. The third in the series is entitled Forever Mine. And so this is me and uh, Ben on our wedding day. And it was very exciting for me because you can see that 
the bride, me, um, she has Afro puffs <laughs> with the veil in her Afro puffs, her galaxy puffs, or galactic puffs, you can say. <laughs> and for me, it was important to have that feature because our hair has been suppressed for so long, and it still is, and our hair is beautiful in our natural state, and I was always told that it wasn't, that it was lacking in some way, that long is better, but I think bigger is better. <laughs> and so it was important um, for me to show natural hair on a wedding day, um, that that is you know, the most beautiful, and that's something to be proud of. The last in the Black Girl Magic series is entitled Free. And it's me um, just feeling free and abandonment um, on a unicorn because, of course, if you're part of the galaxy, <laughs> being on a magical horse is necessary, so a unicorn. So it's just showing like the freedom I felt like when I unleashed the rest of my personality, no longer having to be suppressed and in my language, in my dress. Um, for a long time, I would never wear any color in my hair because I didn't want to be um, looked at a certain way or be called ghetto um, at my school. Everyone had an opinion on how my hair should be worn, um, what clothing I should wear, um, assumed that I could sing and that I could dance and do all these things because that was their idea of um, the African American culture. And so it was just really about me making my own choices despite what people think um, I should be or how I should act. So this is just symbolizes my freedom. This series is very important to me and it is actually the first prints I got made because I wanted to share the beauty with, um, with the black community and really show and highlight you know, that we are beautiful. So I got these prints made um, to sell. And so this is something that I will be distributing on my Etsy page and I hope to get a table soon and be uh, selling my artwork in New York and in Brooklyn. So these are, this is my series, Black Girl Magic. So it's a very important series for my life. It was very interesting for me to realize that my artistic block really dissolved as soon as I let down the rest of my barriers and I let a part of myself um, be completely free. So thank you for um, listening to my my journey and I'm still learning more about my roots every day and embracing the beauty that is the black culture, the black community that is us. So now I just wanted to um, share about why I created my blog. So again, back to 13th, it was definitely a crucial part of who I am <laughs> and mending and the healing of bringing me back to my people. I didn't realize that because of the environment I was around that I didn't love myself, I didn't love my black skin, and I didn't love um, my, my community either. And so I really wanted to find a way to, to engage with my community, to get to know them and to fall in love with them, and to really put all the, the negative talk that had been fed to me behind me. So after I watched 13th, I was just like, what can I do to help my black community every day? I mean, as small as just smiling at every single black person I see on the street and just having that connection it's just that's been really powerful for me and I also decided to create a blog and to um, merge my artistic talent with my my love of and passion of writing and then also of my love for activism uh, wanting to really change the narrative that surrounds um, the black community so I started a social justice blog called WeMatter.blog. And I chose the name We Matter because we do matter. And I also wanted people to realize that we're all one. We are united. And so I didn't necessarily want to isolate um, persons from visiting my blog based off of the name um, by addressing you know, specific skin tones to, to the naming convention. But We Matter is to highlight the black experience in America because it needs to be addressed. And I thought a blog would be a good idea because there are certain places in this world, in our country even, that people are just not going to run into a black person. And so 
people just tend to have a perception of who black people are based on the media and the because the media portrays the black community in a specific light, which tends to be negative and stereotypes us in a lot of ways, the country, the world doesn't really know who black people are. And we're so varied, just like any race. So I really wanted to have my blog be a way to humanize the black community face by face, because how I see it is, if you have one black person you're connected to and you can imagine that they're the person that's been gunned down in the streets, you, are, you have some kind of empathy link that maybe you didn't have before as if, if you don't know any black persons. So that was just my goal after discussing with my sister who lives in a rural area in Illinois that you know, she's one of very few in her area of black people. And so I never really thought about that there's many places in our country where people will never encounter a black person so all they have to go off of on how they really feel a black person is is the perception given by the media which is inaccurate. So my blog is to introduce the black community to the world and in a non-confronting um, or confrontational way um, because people can just explore the blog at their leisure and do it in the privacy of their home if they want, but then it can also start dialogue as well, which I love because the only way to really get through tough issues is to have a conversation and to have a conversation with someone who has a perspective that's different than yours to push and challenge that perspective. So we matter, our histories, our stories, our lives. So our histories, I speak about black history, I also have a subsection under our histories that is focused on dispelling the lies that are fed to society, so dispelling myths um, such as black hair doesn't grow. Of course our hair grows just like anyone else's, but tapping into the history of why our hair hasn't been allowed to grow. So I cover things like that. Then in our stories is when I merge my artistic talent with my passion for writing and introducing um, different black influencers and um, black persons I admire to the world. So I have many interviews that I conduct and I've conducted one with Melvin Isaac and I'm currently working on his portrait right now because I like to pair the interview side by side with a portrait of that person. So here I actually have one. This is the first person I interviewed, KJ Moody, and he works um, with Beyonce. And so this is his portrait. So this is marker and then gel pens. And this is 11 by 14 size. So this is KJ Mooney and you can find him under that name on Instagram. So he's one of the first people I interviewed. Then on the third section of my blog, Our Lives, it's where I'm able to express myself in the form of poetry, which is very therapeutic for me. And the more I read about the black experience in America and our histories and our struggles, the more it just pours out of me. And so I have quite a few poems on there that I've recorded myself speaking that are in tribute to those who have been slain by cops and vigilantes. So it was also important to me for my website header, which is behind me and here as well, to have persons that reflect the different the different experiences of black Americans and also to memorialize those who have been taken from us. So here you have Trayvon Martin, who it was very important for me to have him on my website because his life being taken really spurred the, the revival of the black civil rights movement. So it was important for me to have him there as well as Philando Castile. His death was very, they're all very tragic, but his death really impacted me, especially after coming on the heels of the um, death of Alton Sterling. So both of them were killed within, I believe, four days of each other. Then I wanted to touch on the intersectionality of issues. So here I have a black Muslim woman and the persecution that comes there as well. And also I have um, a young black boy who has fairer skin and light eyes because as African Americans, as Americans, we come in all shades and that's part of our history too. Shadism is a huge issue in our community. So I thought it was important to have someone there representing that part of our community as well. 
Also, um, the intersectionality of being a black female in this country. Black females are targeted just as often as black males, but because we're female, we don't get the media attention. This is Latasha Harlins, who was killed in 91. And she was a 15-year-old girl who was accused of stealing at a liquor store and an Asian American clerk shot her in the back of the head. She only received 500 hours of community service for taking this girl's life. And her death is often overshadowed. Um, so I thought it was important to highlight her. And then here we have an African American man behind bars um, because this is really, slavery never ended. We are still locked up um, and mass incarceration is the way that we've been allowed to be kept in slavery. So it was important for me to have that represented. Here is just showing like the beauty of the black family. And so we have a mother with her daughter and both of them are in head wraps and have natural hair because it's a beautiful thing, the natural hair movement happening to really show self-love and love for our culture. And then here we have a woman with her natural hair and she has afro pick and she's just excited and this uh, really is representative of people like me who have found excitement in discovering who they are through their hair and the empowerment that comes with that. So another portrait I have is of Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., very important title. So this is also Marker and uh, Milky Pin and I thought it was important to do it in purple because it just highlights the beauty of us and the depth in this color, uh, the saturated tones, it just really speaks to me and the royalty also because the black community has been told that our lives aren't worth anything so I thought it was important to remind us that no, we are royalty, we are worth just as much as any other life. And then lastly I have a watercolor portrait I did of Beyonce uh, and this is called Arrival. It's when she um, gave birth to her two twins and this watercolor took me about 23 hours and I just thought it was a beautiful um, portrait of her and you know shows the beauty of motherhood and of strong black women and the family aspect which is so important and is something that has been broken um, because of the systemic racism in our country. So I have so much art <laughs> and some of it is on my blog but a lot on my social justice blog a lot of it is also on my art blog which is princesslissa.com and or princesslissa.wordpress.com and you can also find it on my Facebook page which is Facebook um, dot com slash artist a smithley and you can also find me on instagram under princess lissa art and all of those links will be provided at the end of this episode so thank you so much melvin for having me back i really appreciate it i'm so grateful to be able to share my experience of coming into my own as a black female and how that freedom of accepting who I am and loving my beautiful black skin has transcended into my artwork and into being able to help my community and share the beauty that is the black community with the world. Thank you. Okay, I want to really thank uh, my guests, uh, well, a guest, a host, a whole lot of other stuff that uh, she was uh, telling us about and providing. And this is one of the things that I'm really interested in doing is helping out the young people, the youth. Uh, give them a platform because they have a lot to offer. Uh, they are artists telling their stories through their art, which she was just doing. And it was a fantastic story, a great story. Uh, and plus, black history, this is our last week of black history. So uh, providing that type of information is powerful. And uh, I got my arms open. I got my hand out, reaching out to other artists, young artists, because we definitely want you all to uh, share your stories through your art, through your talent, through the gift that you was provided with through birth. And uh, I welcome everyone. And, and this is just going to be a, a, a series of uh, workshops or videos or filming production that I am doing on the Artistic Talent Show. 
And uh, like I said, this is powerful right now, uh, especially with what you just heard. And uh, we welcome many, many, many more. So anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, always tune in to the Autistic Talent Show every Thursday uh, from 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. And this is on Cable Vision 67 on the Autistic Talent Show. And you can watch it all over the boroughs at the uh, Verizon 5042. So thank you again, and we welcome you to tune in to my show to watch what's going on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Such a relaxing time. Um, it's great after really delving into a lot of um, deep history, especially like after I do a lot of reading um, to educate myself on everything that's happening um, with black civil rights. I, it's important that you take care of your mental health, so I make sure to listen to something relaxing, to go on a walk, to write some poetry or write in a journal, to do something that reminds me that this is a fight that we can win. Like, people are rising up, change is happening, and you have to stay optimistic, you have to keep hope alive, because hope is what gets you to the end. Hope is what keeps you going and it's how we achieve goals together. So picture yourself here on this amazing beach. <laughs> Sit back and relax. <laughs> no, you, you, you get right. Well, you know what, uh, because this is true what she was just saying, because uh, listen, I'm on it right now, mentally, physically I'm still here at the brick, but mentally, yeah, I'm, I'm at the, uh, I'm in a different island right now. I'm on the beach, I'm having a good time because there's so much that we go through, you know, uh, especially when we go to work, especially with, as far as the artist is, you know, you're doing so much stuff, you know. Uh, for me, I'm going to different galleries, I'm dealing with different people, I'm doing videos, I'm dealing with black history, uh, working with a young, lot of young people, so it's, it's stressful, you know, it's a lot of stuff, so I need time to just relax. I need a vacation. And this is my way of taking vacation, just relaxing uh, behind a, uh, a beach, you know, just sit back, relax, and maybe about a week or two, you know, mentally, you know, because I know physically, you know, but mentally, you know, I, I, and I'm sure that, you know, the viewers out there, you feel the same way, you know. It's, you want to be somewhere where it's very relaxing. Uh, it's no problem, no one, you know, trying to uh, uh, rob you or steal from you, whatever it might be, or things that happen, people get killed all over, and you're trying to express it. So all of this is, you just need a break. Just a break where you can just relax yourself, this is some, some jazz or whatever type of music you like to listen to, and just calm down, you know, because we already know that art is a way of expressing what you feel, see, or think. And now, the way I feel is relaxed. And uh, the way I see, as you can see behind me, I'm at the beach. <laughs> it's like I won the lottery, you know. Uh, you know, one of those lottery things and it scratched off and there I am. And you would never know it because uh, you just see me now and that's how it end up. And you feel the same way if you happen to win something, you know, you're gone, you're out of here, all of us. <laughs> so anyway, thank you again for watching the uh, Artistic Talent Show. Uh, we just want to give you something to uh, feel, something to think about, to relax your mind as you're watching this show. And so we just, you know, put ourselves on the beach in the background. And we just showing you the same way, just relax. And until the next time uh, we see you again, or hear from you, or we do our show, uh, this the way it will be. Thank you again. So I think we did that. Yeah, that's good. I think so. Yeah, that's good. <laughs>
Thank you.